Hi guys, today's video is all about healing. So the other day I was thinking and this question popped into my head and it was about when does healing take place? And today I'm gonna talk about a kind of healing after a breakup and or a divorce. But most of us has been through a tremendous heartbreak or struggle or ending of a relationship where we need some time to rebuild and heal our lives. And often I get asked the question, when, when do I start to heal? You know, Monica, my, my heart hurts so much and uh, I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I completely understand, even being through, having been through my own heartbreak, we go through this um, ebb and flow, we go through this wanting to make sense of or trying to understand and really coming to understand that there are parts that maybe we won't understand. So really I thought I'd take some time today and talk about healing. Healing after, you know, a, a breakup, heartbreak. So again, I wanna look at um, rebuilding, I wanna look at grief, I wanna look at acceptance, and really, you know, this question of when does healing take place? So first, I just want to read something that I find to be powerful. When we rebuild our lives after a tremendous heartbreak, we have the ebb and flow of horrible and amazing days. Really, in rebuilding our lives, or rebuilding ourselves and healing from heartbreak, we get to learn about ourselves in new and amazing ways. We explore, create, suffer, grieve, accept, and we learn, all, we learn through all of it. So... To me, that's part of how we answer the question, when does healing take place? You know, what do we do after a heartbreak? And for me, it's, um, you know, we have to kind of go through the ups and downs and, and we really don't want to go through the downs. But, so let's back up. When we're in a relationship and things are starting to kind of crumble or fall apart, in my opinion, we go through this kind of push-pull, this holding on, this letting go. Um, you know, we have long nights of talking or struggle, tears, anger. You know, we're going through, um, th through this process. And really part of that process is change. Change is occurring and we're not sure where, it's, where we're going. And so there's a lot of uncertainty, there's anxiety, there's fear. And there is heartbreak in and of itself. And whether we know that it's um, a change that's coming or it's an unexpected change, it's really this upheaval in our lives. And it creates a tremendous amount of stress. And then a decision comes that the relationship is ending. And I think sometimes it depends on who ends the relationship. But really, when a relationship comes to an end, whether you want it to or not, it's a loss and it's a death. And so we take time to grieve. And sometimes we struggle with that, especially if we weren't expecting it or we didn't want it. And to me, that's when the healing process starts, but we're not quite aware that it's a, the healing process yet. The reality is, is that a decision had been made or has been made, and so change has occurred. And, you know, it's how do we step forward into uncertainty, into, well, that's not what I wanted, into heartbreak, and, and then into new beginnings. And I did a video several, almost a year ago, about embracing change, and it talked about how to embrace a new beginning. But when we're in the midst of a relationship just ending, we're not thinking about new beginnings, we're thinking about pain and heartbreak. So first, it's understanding that we just need time. And in that moment, time is not our friend. And we go through, um, part of the ebb and flow is a deep, deep sadness. And then, you know, some days you can wake up and you can breathe a little easier. You find ways to just survive. And you find ways to get up and go to work or talk to your friends or um, get your kids ready for school. Whatever the situation is, you find a way. And some days you don't want to. So, you know, I think it's understanding that in the beginning, it is just honoring your grief, honoring your sadness, but don't stay stuck in it. 
you know, find little moments where you're smiling. Find little moments where you're able to say, um, today kind of sucks and I'm going to get up and get moving anyways. And you're going to have those days where you, you suffer and um, you're going to have those middle of the night ugly tears. This is the time when you contact your support network, when you put into place those ways that you take care of yourself. You know, it's in those moments, how do I survive? And as I've said in my other videos, those moments of ugly tears or of complete, like you feel like you can't breathe, they only last a moment. And I know in the, in the midst of it, it feels like a lifetime. But remember, breathe. You know, remember that it's a moment. Remember that you will survive this. You just have to put your mind to it and know that um, this little saying, when one door closes, another one opens. Now in the midst of heartbreak, sometimes you don't wanna hear that because you're still suffering. You still want, you don't understand what happened or why the relationship ended or sometimes you blame yourself. You know, you go through all of that and um, you don't wanna hear about new beginnings. So just remember, what do I need to say to myself in this moment to help me through it? Brene Brown talks about um, finding forgiveness and um, in one of her clips, and I really liked what she said. And she talked about grief, acceptance, and forgiveness. And before we can get to forgiveness or acceptance, the one thing she says that I completely agree with is that we have to take time to grieve. We have to acknowledge the death of the relationship. We have to acknowledge that we can't go back in time. And that's really hard, especially when you're in this like beginning phase of, of a breakup. You don't want to. So what I'll say is, again, take time to grieve and also take time to find little things that make you smile or conversations with your friends. Connection is key in those moments, as I've said in previous videos. And then what, what you'll notice is as time moves on, as you take care of yourself in healthy ways, you know, um, exercise, diet, taking that time to grieve, taking time with your support network, taking care of yourself, going to therapy if you need to, reading books, trying new things, you know, exploring parts of yourself that you didn't know, reconnecting with parts of yourself that maybe you lost in the relationship, all of those things help you continue just to put one foot in front of the other as you go through this process. And then over time, you wake up and you know you wake up every day and it's not the first thing in, on your mind. Or you know you notice that maybe you're out doing something that you would have done with your partner and you're not thinking about him or her. You notice that um, you're creating new memories that make you smile and you feel better. You know, and I, and remember guys, that takes time. You know, give yourself permission to take time to work through this and to heal. It is okay at times when you're ready, when you feel good about yourself, if you wanna start dating again or making friendships with other people, it's okay to do that. Just don't do it out of loneliness or distraction. And um, the one part that I think is really important, and I've said it, and I said it in the little reading that I gave you, is uh, explore new things. You know, when you can start to feel the sense of aliveness or excitement again, you know that you're, first of all, you feel better, and um, it gives you new things to think about. It brings joy into your life, it brings connection, all good things. And the other thing that, you know, how do you know when healing takes place? is you feel a sense of freedom. Freedom from your pain, freedom from your past, freedom in the ability to explore the new doors that you're knocking on or maybe that you've opened. You feel better. Um, you look at the loss of the relationship in a whole different way. Um, it's a release. You've let go. You know, it doesn't mean that you don't think about it. It doesn't mean at times that uh, it doesn't bring you to tears again. And, and all of that is okay. You've changed your relationship to your grief about the loss of the relationship. And, and that's a good thing. You know, so to me, it's a, it's a, it's progress. It's a progression of how, you know, you've kind of moved 
and you've healed, you've grieved, you've accepted the loss, and you've found forgiveness for the things that happened, whether it's forgiving yourself, forgiving your partner, and, and moving forward. You have let go of the pain, and also you get to hold and decide what memories you choose to keep, and the ones that you're saying, it's okay to leave you in the past. You have learned about yourself. You've explored new possibilities. You've grown. You know what you like, what you don't like. You know what's okay and what's not okay. You know how to stand up for yourself. You know how to have a voice. And you know when it's time for your next relationship that you're different. And you're actually happy to have let go of the old relationship. So to me, healing takes place when we understand that healing has nothing to do with the other person and everything to do with you. Because you have officially closed the door and you have officially stepped into new beginnings. And you step in with freedom, with excitement, with love. You know, and that's the other, one last thing I think I wanna say is, how do you know when healing takes place? is when you can look at the past with love, whether it's self-love and um, loving all parts of you that, that happened or that took place or the ugly parts that maybe you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that at the end. Or, um, you know, you just look at it with love and you look at the other person through the lens of love and maybe find forgiveness for their ugly parts too or compassion and love that, um, you look at it through the lens of love that the relationship came to an end and that's okay. And I've learned things and I've become who I'm meant to be in, in the here and now. So, you know, how does healing take place after a breakup? It's all the things that I've said. And the most important is, is that you have become who you are today. And remember, you're amazing, and you know, through our greatest struggles come our greatest gifts. And, and that's what I mean by that, is through that heartbreak or through that ending of the relationship, you have become you know, your greatest gift, or you're putting things into place that's helping you move forward to who you're meant to be. So it's okay to grieve, it's okay to work through your pain if you're willing to look at how you can learn from what's happened in the past. You know, looking through the past, looking in the past and using, um, you know, what do I need to learn from? That's really important. So take time to grieve and also take time to explore and feel that sense of freedom that, you know, you are a new person and you have new and amazing opportunities right at your feet. You just have to step forward. All right, everyone, have a great day. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for weekly updates all about relationships.